Hey Internet, I'm Chaz. And I'm Dan. Welcome to Wine and Serious Business, episode 116. Uh, back to Oregon. We've uh, diverted a little bit, tasted some crazy wines from Jamaica, tasted some samples that we got. Wines. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> tasted some cheaper stuff to kind of check in on that. Kind of back to our core subject here, looking at wines from Oregon from some of our... The good stuff. One of our favorite producers and one new producer we've heard a lot about. I think it was the New Year's episode. We asked for recommendations from you guys to suggest wines. I heard through that and from just friends that I know from about three different people, like check out Walter Scott. So we're going to do both of those today. We're going to start out with the Seven of Hearts, though. Um, Byron's been making... Uh, Make him wine for a few years. I'm not sure exactly how long, but he's been well regarded from the beginning, uh, both in the winemaker community and amongst consumers. Hearing great things about him, nice guy to visit. Got a great tasting room in yeah. Carlton. I'd say if you're ever out enjoyable. there, check it out. If you got, especially if you've got some ladies with you that aren't that into the wine thing, they've got a chocolate shop too. So it's really one of the best, like uh, just like friendly stops to go check out when you're out in the valley. I completely agree. And Byron's always behind the counter. Every time I've been there, he's been behind the counter. Yeah, behind the counter pouring. Can't talk today. Um, always super enjoyable to talk to. Really, yeah, a lot of fun. Every time I taste there, it's fun. And this is the uh, the 2010 Leah's Vineyard. Uh, this is a single vineyard from the Shahala Mountains. And uh, yeah, and we, I, we really enjoyed it in the tasting room. We're like, let's do this for the show. Like, yeah, let's get this on the show. Yeah, small small production too. 77 cases. Wow, tiny. And it is tiny. tiny. All right, let's... go out there and get it. Check it out. Yeah. Mm. Oh man, there's more funk. So we tasted yeah. them all again, right? This is a little, little more colder. Than, yeah, that's up, true. Too. Warming up a little bit, so yeah, it's got some of that like the Oregon funk. Yeah, that we, we yep. used to a little use bit a lot of wood here. on the forest floor, a little yeah. bit of leather. Yep, and uh, and like a like floral and cherries. Like there's a lot going on yeah. in the nose. Bright, really enjoyable. bright red fruit. Really, really enjoyable nose. Yeah, I don't think you're gonna mistake this for anything but Pinot Noir either. I think it's really like a, a lot of a lot of varietal character to it. Very Oregon. It smells awesome. Good acidity keeps things clean all the way across the palate. Nice touch of minerality in the middle. Bright, fresh fruit. That's really good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the fruit is like super fresh. It's like just just like biting into a mouthful of berries. I mean, nice. Got a little bit, got a little bit of everything there. Like definitely strawberry and raspberry fruit. Um, Less cherry dominated, like than the nose. The nose had definitely more cherries, but man, it's just, just fresh and delicious. And Getting a little, a little bit of minerality going on there. Yeah, just a little touch of it alongside the tongue. A little bit of black pepper spice in the back end when the tannins set to start to set in. Tannins are really gentle too. Like they show up, giving just a little bit of texture on the finish, but they're really friendly. Uh, and even as a popping pour, like we we popped the cork out, took some sips right away, and uh, this was this was friendly and drinkable right out of the gate. So this is this. Young at 2010, but it's ready. Like, mm -hmm. if you if you've got a bottle, you're wondering about it, get into it. It's good stuff and really gentle too. I mean, mm -hmm. it's not um, to people who have sensitive palates to wine. Like my girlfriend has a very sensitive palate to wine. This is wine that I would totally be pouring for her because of how gentle the structure is, how gentle the intensity is, and it's all very balanced itself. There's no like extreme peaks in anything. It's quite good. Yeah, little yeah, a little bit of fruit, a little bit of floral character. Just that little bit of tannins to add some structure. Like, this yeah. is really right where I like my tannins. Sometimes, you know, I enjoy a little more body or whatever, but this is the gentler side. This is... And enough complexity to Man. keep it really interesting, too. Totally. Right? Yeah. Both stuff. on the nose and on the palate. And it feels light. Like, it's got this, this, this feeling of lightness, too. It's really easy drinking. Yeah. I like that. I like when a wine, I like, I like definitely like more intense wines, serious wines. But, man, I like it when a wine can pull off sort of just a relaxed feeling, but they still be complex and completely interesting. So, 91 points for me. I Took like the it. words right out of my mouth. Yeah. I'm like, this night. I'm like, this is better than 90. This is drinking so well right now mm -hmm. that uh, that I'm really digging it. So, yeah, totally recommend it. Check it out. Crap, I totally forget the price point. Uh, what the heck? I'll take a cut. I'll look it up. I'll be right back. All right, All right back. Um, Thirty-five dollars is what the website says, and we talk a lot of time. Maybe you can find a little below suggested retail price. At 77 cases, I bet this is only out of the tasting room. Yeah. I bet you're going to pay $35 for it. Uh, this kills it at $35. Bucks. Mm -hmm. no Absolutely. Hesitation. Um, and yeah, totally worth, a producer totally worth checking out all of his wines because even his $20 Willamette Valley blends are always good PR. Pretty, pretty damn good. Yeah, awesome PR. All right. So, Getting the rinse. What Wine number two. This is the uh, Walter Scott Holstein Vineyard. This is uh, a project by a couple, uh, couple more local Portland people, Erica and Ken. Um, 
nice. Well, Erica's super nice. I just met her for the first time last night, actually. It was crazy. I'm like, I've got a bottle of your wine that I'm going to do on this little video blog that I do tomorrow night. You got any information for us? And uh, she's like, yeah, sure. This is cool. So apparently Walter Scott is the name of her husband Ken's grandfather. So it's kind of like a tribute to him, okay. which is pretty cool. And the little wing logo on the front there is uh, he, he worked for TWA. So it's, it's a little oh. tribute to the, uh, to, to the air industry. Um, built in the label, and it's nice. You know, got some family history tied into it. Um, That's a cool label. Nice yeah. package. Yeah, right? Like, good good design on it. Uh, really well-respected people in the Portland wine scene. So, uh, and, and this was recommended by, like, like I said earlier, by a lot of people. So we're really excited to check it out. Picked this up at Food Front um, for, for also in the low 30s, like 33 bucks or something like that. Awesome. And, uh, yeah, and, it, and it's a single vineyard, which is cool, right? They have a couple lower-end bottlings, so I'm really excited to try mm -hmm. And you, you said you used Dundee Hills. Pulse yes, Vineyard, Dundee Hills. Dundee Hills. It says right on the right on the front label. Um, and 2009, and quite a bit darker than the Seven of Hearts, which was a 2010. This is totally definitely showing a lot of color. And man, the nose smells awesome. <laughs> <laughs> a, little, a little heavier on the nose. There's no question yeah. about that. Just like thick cherries. A little touch of sweetness. I love that. And a little something herbal around the sides, I'm like, ah, mint? No. Eucalyptus? No. But like something in that direction, something like oh. aromatic and uh, not like stemmy green, but just like a little bit of herbal. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm trying to do a rose punch to it. Maybe. I'm bad at that. So, but then, you know, just something to, yeah, to spice some, up the, the rich cherry I totally, fruit. I totally a get bit. that. Getting a little bit of oak underneath it all, too, and it's not like super vanilla. It's more like just a hint of caramel around the edges of the cherries. A little bit of dark, and just like dark earth too, like a, like a like a truffle or a mushroom or something like that. Like not a truffle, truffle's too rich, but man, it's smells cool. Nice. Smells good. good news. Smells like yeah. good stuff. Very inviting. A lot of spice on the palate. Um, getting a little bit of like like black pepper. Um, the cherries are showing. A bit on the mid palate, but that herbal note from the nose is, is really strong with the cherries as well. And this one, I'm sort of getting like a peppery note to it. Mm -hmm. Did you say? Did you say that? Anybody? I said that on the. I said that. Yeah, on I said on the, Yeah, you yeah. said it's okay. So yeah. But I on the palate. I totally agree with you. Yeah, this is definitely like, and showing like a little. It's like maybe like stemmy notes to it. No, mm -hmm. no. It's like a dried wood component, but it's like not wood. It's something else. But it's, it's probably pepper. I mean, just like a black pepper note. Across, right over the top of a bunch of really, really dark cherries, almost like pie cherries. A little bit of reduction going on, but uh, strong acidity. Yeah, totally, very strong. So structurally, pretty, pretty full structure, right? Yeah. Full acidity, making the mouth water a little bit. The tannins kind of settle in the mid palate, hang out there for a bit. Man, the flavor in the mid palate, those fruit, that fruit. Hangs on for a long time. Finishes very long. I like the fruit too. It's like totally, totally ripe. Mm -hmm. Kind of a juicy, sen juicy sensation to the cherries. I'm digging it. This is this is definitely sort of reminds me of what an 09 should be. This is riper fruit, maybe a bit big structure, but the intensity is there throughout. Um, I don't know. What's holding it back for me is just. It, the, the, it's very, very, it's structured. It's, it's very highly structured. Like, very, very highly. And coming from something that was a bit softer, maybe my palate's just not ready for that. But, uh, s still, there's, oh. It's definitely on the firmer side, right? Yes, like, yes, it, it yeah. has that firm touch to it. And it, There uh, are things I like about this mm -hmm. wine a lot, and there are things that are holding me back from, like, throwing a, a great score at because I mean it is very very nice wine it's just there's certain things that I find it's, it's uh, certain things I find out of balance but still absolutely delicious and a lot of a lot of intensity a lot of complexity really really delicious but, yeah. yeah good character I, 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 and I think uh, we're kind of on a similar page with this where, where yeah like the, the tannic structure is pretty full on the mid palate right now and I think uh, a little more time for that to like mellow out and let those really delicious fruit flavors like mix in with everything. Mm -hmm. We'll do it a lot of good, and uh, just needs better. Yeah, it just needs to integrate more. Possibly, because we, we were talking about this. We were talking about this a little earlier too, right? Like 
the core's there, right? There's yeah. good, like all the components are rock solid. A little more time for it to all come together, and it'll be ready. It's not missing anything. No, nope. it's just everything's not in order. So right I'm gonna now. I'm gonna take it to uh, 88 points now, but at that price point, still uh, still rock solid. And I think uh, in another even six months, uh, this will be yeah. or or a year, you're gonna be really happy you have this. Like it's really expressing some of the really good uh, really good fruit qualities of the Dundee Hills. I'm gonna go 89 plus on it. Because I, I love the flavors. I love that Dundee Hills fruit, like the especially the nose where you can get a little bit of that sweet edge. Sort of reminds me of that that terroir. Um, and for thirty three dollars, you said yep. this is something I will probably will buy a couple bottles of in store because based on the structure and based on the ripeness of fruit, which I really tend to like or I do like in this wine, um, I think yeah, just if it if it's able to pull off integration in a bottle after a year or more, you know. Um, of age, then it'll it'll be awesome. It'll definitely go over ninety points. But nice to, to yeah. I I have a hard. I, I don't know where wines will go at this point. I've I struggle with. I'm still learning about right aging wines. Yeah. Still learning about aging wines. But yes, fantastic wine and and killer at the price point. So yeah, both totally worth checking out. If you see either one of them on the shelves, heartily recommend both of them. Yeah, um, absolutely. On to the question of the day, we were just talking about how the, the episode on Jamaican wine that we did a couple weeks ago went over really well. We got a lot of comments about that. People are talking about it. Mm -hmm. uh, it, was Chaz, a fun, it was a fun show. Chaz had a fun time. Why? When was yeah. the last time you watched a full episode? Oh, it's been a while. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you know, so that that, that you know, people yeah. been enjoying watching it. We were wondering, you want to you want to see us do some more stupid wine? You want to see some more of that stuff? Goofy yeah. shows. Yeah, like I mean, we did the Thunderbird. We've done Manischewitz. Yeah, you know what? What other wine? The comments on those shores, of course, people are like, "Yeah, bring on the Mad Dog." But uh, what about for the people that watch an Oregon Pinot episode? Do you want to see us do Mad Dog on the show? Yeah. Thanks do for you. watching. Man. See you guys later.